Hey everybody, Fred here from plcgurus.net. So you're following along in our Control Logics PID Essentials video series, and we are now in the 11th installment in that series. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, I do highly, highly recommend that you do do that so you know exactly where we are now, okay? So I'm gonna assume that you've watched all the previous videos, you've gone ahead and downloaded the Control Logics PID uh, Essentials Sim Panel, and you're right up to speed with me here. So in the last video, what we did is we, we got everything kind of talking to each other and connected, and we started performing some open loop tests in hand mode, which we are currently in now. Um, and we noticed that everything worked as expected in that the response or the dynamic response to a change in our CV, our PV followed it immediately because we know that we have a theoretical perfect process with zero dead time and zero lead lag time. But we did see that when we actually hit it with a slight temperature disturbance, when in auto or closed loop feedback mode, that the controller went into instability almost immediately and oscillated uncontrollably. So you know what we think we should do here? Let's just reproduce that part. And then what I wanna to do today is do a brute force approach to manual tuning. Okay, so let's head on over to our trend and fire that up so we can get that going. All right, so that's running now. And notice we're in hand mode. We're gonna start it up in open loop control mode and we're gonna start our process. Now remember, the valve isn't going to do anything because we're in open loop control mode. Remember what we said? In open loop or hand mode, whatever value we place in CV hand is gonna get output directly to our steam valve. So we are allowing the operator to take direct control over the position of the valve. And this is why we've wired it into CV operator tag here on the PIDE itself. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in our usual 50%, and we know, barring any temperature disturbance, that if we open this valve to 50%, that it will get us to the set point of 97.5 degrees, which will provide us with bumpless transfer. I'm doing the air finger quotes, bumpless transfer. Okay, let's head back to our trend just to take a look. And there we go, we see that immediate response. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick it into automatic mode now. So we're in auto now, and notice we have stability, nothing is changing, right? We have no disturbance, we're at exactly set point with zero error, and nothing is moving. But what happens when I introduce a disturbance? So I'm just gonna slide that up and inject amount of heat into the process. Okay, and you can see my temperature disturbance trend line did in fact increase to 10 degrees C. And now notice that we, we run into this instability and this uncontrollable oscillation. So I think that's kind of where we left it in the last video. So what I wanna do now is manually tune this thing by using no methodology whatsoever, okay? We're just gonna take a brute force go at this and try to dial in some some gains that are gonna get this uh, loop under some kind of reasonable control. And when I say reasonable, we're gonna be able to see that response from the trend screen here. And even though we're gonna brute force this thing, I do wanna use this as an opportunity to let you know that I have developed an ebook that you can head on over to plcgurus.net and download. I'll include a link in the download section which goes over in explicit detail how to practically tune a PID loop, okay? So I've called it PID loop tuning made easy. And you can go ahead and just, it's a, it's a, a short guy, but if you're responsible for doing any kind of loop tuning in your facility, I do highly, highly recommend that you grab this uh, document because it gives you a tried and true method for tuning or manually tuning any control loop that you're gonna encounter, whether it be in an open loop control or, or a closed loop type production tuning. So again, you can download that from plcgurus.net and it will walk you through and give you a quantitative approach to coming up with proper gain values. But where's the fun in that, okay? Uh, we're just gonna play with it here. We're, we're gonna see if we can just trial and error this thing into 
um, into into a, a reasonable response. And I have run it through some of these simple mathematical equations you'll find in the tuning manual itself. So I know where we need to be, um, but I, let's just pretend for argument's sake here that we don't and we're just gonna play with it. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and stop the process now and I'm gonna kick us back into hand mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and zero out our temperature disturbance just to get going here. And while we're at it, just zero that out. That's why we have that little filter in there to make it a little bit easier. It likes to jump around a little bit. Ah, oh, get in there. There we go. And you can see things are kind of settling back out. I'm just gonna stop the trend for now and I'm gonna head back over to our loop routine. Okay, so here we go. So here are our gains. So we saw that the PV was 180 degrees out of phase precisely with our output CV. So right away, that's a clear indicator to me that our proportional action is far too high. When you see that 180 degree phase shift between the CV and PV, that's usually a good indicator that you, you're too heavy on the proportional action. So to get going, why don't we just zero out the integral? And you know what, I'm gonna dial this back to 10. And remember, we're just brute forcing this. If you, if you want a more tried and true way to do this, I like I said, see the comment section below and go ahead and download my little ebook. Um, believe me, it's very straightforward and it'll get you some good results straight away. Okay, so why don't we go ahead, let's go back to our trend and we've got a proportional now at 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the run just to start that back up and let's start our process back up in in hand mode i'm going to go 50 percent in cv hand and we should see that go right up to our set point good i'm going to go ahead and hit that uh put that into closed loop mode sorry and now maybe instead of adding a disturbance we can add a disturbance another way by simply doing a step change in set put set point so why don't we make our set point 105 and that's the same as adding an external disturbance there so you can see right away that we're still going into that instability. Do you see that? Okay, so I think we're still a little bit too heavy on our proportional action there. Okay, so why don't we go back in now? We're gonna have to stop it because I don't think we can get it back now. And this function, if we weren't limited by our physical constraints of our valve, the mechanical uh, constraints of the valve, this function would actually grow right to infinity. Okay, so the, the only saving grace for us here is we're actually limiting it between zero and 100%. Okay, so let's stop it. And you know what? I'm going to go back now and I'm going to go and put this down to three. I'm going to click apply. All right, so let's kick it back to hand mode and let's start our process up and let's just see what our trend is doing here. Okay, we'll let this stuff kind of clear out. And let's put our CV hand value in. Actually, you know what? Let's put our set point back to 97.5. And now I'm going to go ahead and put us at 50%, right? So now we're gonna see CV jump up. There goes our PV. Okay, we're at set point. And now let's hit it with a little disturbance. Okay. So you see there, while we're not getting to set point, which I wouldn't expect, because remember, we zeroed out the integral, so we're operating right now effectively as a P-only controller. So a P-only controller will never fully eliminate the steady state error, which is why P-only controllers will emulate a bang-bang type control um, and is not very useful for continuous type uh, measurement or proportional action like we're looking for here. Um, so, but we're not oscillating uncontrollably. So I think we found a proportional gain that looks pretty good here. Would you agree? Okay, so I'm gonna stop the process one more time. And now let's add some integral action. I'm gonna go back to our loop controller. So three seemed to work pretty good. So now remember, from the PID equation, I'll pull it up here on the screen, that the integral component, the, the, the term we're 
changing here is the tau sub i term in the full PID equation, meaning the smaller we make the I gain or integral component here, the larger the overall integral term is in our equation because it's a one over tau sub I relationship, okay? I hope that's clear and like I say, just check out the equation there or refer back to previous videos. Um, but just believe me, when we're using dependent form, the smaller we make this integral, the larger the integral component. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make this, well, let's just go 0 0.01 and let's apply that. I'm gonna go ahead and start up our process again and let's put a value, let's get over to our trend and let's get a value in CV hand of, actually, before we do that, let's zero out the temperature disturbance. And now, oh, we're not quite at zero. And now let's bring our set point or bring our PV to our set point by putting a value of 50% in CV hand. And there we go, we're at set point. Now let's kick the controller into auto. We have bumpless transfer. And now let's hit it with a temperature disturbance. I'm gonna hit it with 10 degrees C temperature disturbance. And there we go, we overshot a little bit, but notice how we're settling back nicely to our set point. Did you see that? Okay, so maybe I'm gonna zero that out. You know what? I'm gonna change the uh, I'm gonna change the time span on this just so we can see it a little bit longer. Let's go to our x axis and let's change that to 60 seconds, just so we have a little longer to capture things. There we go. That's a little better. All right, let's zero that out again. All right, and now let's hit it with a set point step change just to see how it responds. I'm gonna go back to that 105. Let's see what it does here. So we've changed it, we have a step there, and notice we start adjusting on our CV, and look at that response. That's a nice response, wow. We're really, we're really tight there. I like that. Let's go back to 97, let's actually go to 85 degrees. So we're just, we're introducing a disturbance now in the way of a set point step change. So I'm gonna step down, and look how tightly we're tracking that. So you know what, I think we could probably get a little more aggressive on the integral action because we have no dead time or leg time in our process so we should see very very tight response here so this is this is really great let's put this back before we do 97.5 and then we'll, we'll we'll hit it with a temperature disturbance i mean we have this here so let's go ahead and use it but i like the way that's tracking you see that step change on set point how our pv and our cv adjusted nicely okay so we have a little bit of a a porpoising here on the CV. So a little more integral. I think we need a little more integral action here. So I'm just gonna stop the process again. Let's switch it back to hand. And I'm gonna head back over to the loop and I'm gonna make this a little bit small. I'm just gonna add another zero here and just see what that does for us. Okay, I'm gonna click apply. Let's uh, head back to the trend. Okay, everything's kind of settled back out to where it should be. Let's start the process. Let's bring it, let's give ourselves some bumpless transfer because we're, you know, we're really good, right? We're the perfect operator here. And now let's kick it into auto. And you know what? Why don't we hit it with a negative temperature disturbance? So I'm gonna slide this negative. So now we're pulling heat energy out of a process, right? Say it's very cold in our plant. So it would follow now that we need more steam which you can see here is happening, our valve is actually opening more because of this negative disturbance that's drawing heat energy out of our process. And look at this, look at this little ripple. We hardly moved. I mean, we're, we're really tight. We have very tight control on this process right now. Let's go the other way, we'll go positive 10. Let's hit it a little bit harder. There we go, we hit straight up. So we see a, still a little bit of porpoising there. We saw a little bit of overshoot, but you know what, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's a pretty good response, okay? So I hope you found this video informative. So we've just gone ahead and brute forced a tuning procedure on our PID loop using graphical analysis only. So we're just looking at our trends to see how the loop is responding to changes in set point and a disturbance and then tweaking the gain values to try to dial that in. So we did it methodically. We zeroed out the integral first, operating as a P only controller. Then once we found a, a, a stable response with P only, 
we know we have to have integral in order to to reset that error rate to zero that's why we had that steady state error you were seeing and now we found a, a a good aggressive integral that caused a little bit of overshoot so we may want to just back off a little bit um but nonetheless gave us very very tight control so I hope you've found this video informative. And again, to find a good quantitative, a very practical field method to tune a PID controller, um, I'll include a link in the comment section. You can go ahead and download that and it'll be, uh, it'll be very useful to you, I assure you. So I hope you found this video informative and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.